Welcome back! My name is Baller Scuba. This is Video Games Over Time! We are still in 1981, and today we're going to talk about the history of Nintendo up to 1981. The story of Nintendo starts all the way back in 1889. Nintendo was founded by Fusajiro Yamauchi on September 23, 1889, as Yamauchi Nintendo. Nintendo originally sold Hanafuda playing cards at a card shop named Nintendo Kopai in Kyoto. At a time when the Japanese government was banning playing cards due to their association with gambling, Nintendo's Hanafuda were an exception. These playing cards became a huge success. Nintendo then expanded, both to another shop and to other card games. While the original cards were all handmade, Yamauchi had to hire assistants to mass produce cards to keep up with demand. In 1929, Fusajiro Yamauchi retired from the company. Not having a son, Fusajiro Yamauchi followed the common Japanese tradition of adopting his son in law, Sekirio Kaneda, who became Sekirio Yamauchi. It was Sekirio Yamauchi who took over the company in 1929. By this time, Nintendo was the largest card maker in Japan. While Sekirio was in charge of the company, Nintendo was renamed Yamauchi Nintendo and Company as it became a joint venture. A distribution company, Marufuku Company Limited, was established, and Nintendo expanded into making Western style cards as well. Sekirio suffered a stroke in 1948. The matter of succession became an issue. Sekirio also only had daughters. Sekirio had also adopted his son-in-law, Shikanojo Inaba, who became Shikanojo Yamauchi. However, Shikanojo abandoned his family when his son, Hiroshi Yamauchi, was just five years old. As a result, he abandoned the inheritance of the company. Hiroshi was in college at the time, studying law at Waseda University. Sekirio convinced his grandson to leave college in order to become president of Nintendo. Hiroshi agreed under the condition that he become the only family member working at the company. Sekirio reluctantly agreed, leaving the company to meet the demands. Hiroshi's cousin also had to leave as a result. Hiroshi Yamauchi was only 21 years old when he took over the company, so he struggled to gain acceptance and respect in his new position. The factory employees went on strike soon after he took over, thinking that they could take advantage of the new president to secure a better deal. Hiroshi, however, did not give in, firing several long-time employees in order to end the strike and secure his authority. Hiroshi changed the name of the company to Nintendo Karuda in 1951. He established a more authoritarian attitude on products as well. All new products had to be approved by Hiroshi himself. In 1953, Nintendo became the first Japanese company to manufacture plastic playing cards. In 1956, Hiroshi visited the United States Playing Card Company in Cincinnati. The USPCC was the largest playing card manufacturer in the world. However, Hiroshi was surprised to see how small their offices were. It was then that Hiroshi realized the limitations of the playing card market. In 1959, Nintendo reached a deal with Disney, a popular American animated film company, to produce playing cards with popular Disney characters on them. This allowed Nintendo to help convince the Japanese public that not all playing cards were used for gambling, and that they could be fun for the whole family. As a result of the joint venture, Nintendo was able to reach new levels of success, selling over 600,000 card packs in a single year. In 1962, Nintendo went public, putting the company on the Osaka Stock Exchange. 
The company's name was then shortened to Nintendo. With the new capital, Nintendo began experimenting in other industries. Nintendo set up a taxi company named Deya, a love hotel chain with rooms that could be rented by the hour, a toy company, and a food company that sold instant rice. It was during this time that Nintendo hired Gunpei Yokoi. Gunpei Yokoi had graduated from Doshisha University with an electronics degree. Nintendo hired him in 1965 to maintain the assembly line machines that manufactured the Hanafuda cards. In 1966, Hiroshi Yamauchi came to inspect the factory where Yokoi was working. Yokoi was playing with a toy he had created, an extending arm. Yamauchi then ordered Yokoi to develop the extending arm as a toy in time for the 1966 Christmas season. That would become the Ultra Hand, which went on to sell over 1 million units. Yamauchi then moved Yokoi from maintenance to product development in a new department for the company, named Games and Setup. Initially, Games and Setup only had two employees, Gunpei Yokoi and someone to keep track of the finances. But the department would prove successful. In 1967, Gunpei Yokoi would create the Ultra Machine, a pitching machine that also sold over a million units. In 1969, he would create the Love Tester, which was a novelty toy where each person would grab a metal sensor and then the Love Tester would give them a score between 1 and 100. In 1970, in partnership with Sharp, a Japanese electronics company, Nintendo released the Beam Gun, the first solar-powered light gun. In 1972, Nintendo released the Elekonga, one of the earliest programmable drum machines. Primarily due to the work of Gunpei Yokoi, Nintendo's toy division was successful. However, all of Nintendo's other new ventures failed, pushing Nintendo to the brink of bankruptcy. The cards and the toys, however, were enough to save Nintendo, at least long enough to see the emergence of the arcade video game market. Because of the success of their own light guns, Magnavox reached out to Nintendo to help with the manufacturing of the light gun for the Magnavox Odyssey. Nintendo also started working on its own arcade games. In 1973, Nintendo released the Laser Clay Shooting System in abandoned bowling alleys. The Laser Clay Shooting System, conceived by Hiroshi Yamauchi and developed by Gunpei Yokoi, used an overhead projector to display moving targets that the player would shoot with a special light gun. While the game did prove successful at first, the success did not last long. Due to a recession in Japan, the system soon forced Nintendo back near bankruptcy. Yamauchi then released a smaller and cheaper version of the Laser Clay shooting system in 1974. This mini Laser Clay system would be released to arcades, using a film projector and an arcade cabinet to achieve a simulated shooting experience. While sales for the mini Laser Clay started slow, this new system was successful overall. Several different games would be released using this system throughout the mid-1970s. Meanwhile, Nintendo had secured the rights to distribute the Magnavox Odyssey in Japan. This would also prove moderately successful for Nintendo. Seeing the success of the Odyssey, Mitsubishi Electric, a Japanese electronics manufacturer, proposed to Nintendo to jointly develop the Color TV game machine. Nintendo accepted, and starting in 1977, the Color TV game series of consoles would be released in Japan. We have previously spoken about the Color TV game series in our Video Game Honorable Mention videos. The series would produce five consoles between 1977 and 1980. These dedicated consoles would become the best-selling first-generation consoles of all time, despite only being released in Japan. The two most popular consoles, the Color TV Game 6 and the Color TV Game 15, 
would each sell over 1 million units. Gunpei Yokoi, meanwhile, would stay busy creating new toys. In 1979, Yokoi created the Chiri Tori, a remote-controlled vacuum cleaner that could be customized with cartoon eyes. In 1980, he created the Nintendo Tumblr Puzzle, or 10 Billion Barrel, which had mechanics inspired by the Rubik's Cube. Yokoi would also create the first Game & Watch games in 1980. We previously talked about these games in our Video Game Honorable Mention video of 1980. These small handheld games would also prove to be very popular in Japan, with Vermin, the most popular of the games, selling over 1 million units. With all the success that Gunpei Yokoi brought Nintendo, Yamauchi reorganized the company with Yokoi as one of the focal points. In a unique way of thinking, Yamauchi split his research and development staff into three divisions that would compete with each other. The idea was that the competition between these three divisions would create more innovation in the company. Gunpei Yokoi was made the head of the first division, named R&D-1. It was during Yokoi's role as the head of R&D-1 that the Game & Watch series was created. Despite the success that Nintendo had in Japan, Nintendo's success had yet to translate over to the American market. Yamauchi hired his son-in-law, Minoru Arakawa, to head Nintendo's operations in America. Arakawa established Nintendo of America, establishing an office in Manhattan in 1980. However, the first major import brought to the United States was Radar Scope. We talked briefly about Radar Scope in our Video Games Honorable Mentions video in 1980. Bringing that game to America proved to be a big mistake for Nintendo. Despite being around for nearly 100 years by this point, Nintendo's success has always been tempered by its scope. First by its reliance on playing cards, then by its inability to be successful in a video game market outside of Japan. It's in 1981 when that changes. And that will do it for the story of Nintendo for now. My name is Baller Scuba. This has been Video Games Over Time. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in our next video where we'll take a closer look at an old film.